Hi, I'm Mandy from Multnomah County Library School Corps with Novelties 2021. If you'd like to find any of the books or websites that I mentioned in the following presentation, links are included in the description below. Let's get started. In this video, I'm sharing books about magic. Our featured title in this category is Root Magic by Eden Royce, ages 8 through 12. Working root connects you to the land, your family, and your ancestors. And you just might need it to keep safe from people and spirits who want to harm you. South Carolina, 1963. Jezebel and her twin, Jay, just lost their grandmother, barely a year after their father disappeared. And they don't dare ask their mother where he went. Their gran was also an incredibly talented Gullah root worker. Should Jez and Jay learn the secrets and maintain the family legacy? School is hard enough for Jez. Jay makes friends so easily, but all she seems to attract are bullies. Bullies whose families openly ridicule root work, but stop by Jez's family workshop in the middle of the night to reap its benefits. Even worse than the bullies is Deputy Collins, a white officer hell-bent on terrorizing black families involved in root work. The new sheriff seems nice enough, but can he, or will he, be able to do something about Deputy Collins's brazen abuse of power? A new girl at school is a clean slate, and Susie might just be the best friend Jez has been looking for. But who is Susie? Or, perhaps more importantly, what is Susie? As the twins' uncle Doc begins teaching the magic of root work, Strange voices and images in the swamp near their house make it clear that the twins, especially Jez, have a strong connection to the spirit world. An overwhelming, possibly dangerous connection. Can Grand still guide them from the other side? Can the family withstand both spiritual and human evils? This engaging story is magical realism in a historical setting intertwined with themes that could be in today's headlines. The author, Eden Royce, is a member of the Gullah Geechee Nation. We have some discussion questions and topics for you based on themes in this book. One would be family and cultural traditions. This would, could be a good opportunity to talk about your students' own family traditions or a chance to invent one they'd like to start of their own. Grief. Jez and Jay experience grief a couple of different ways in the book, both the death of their gran and dealing with the mysterious disappearance of their father and what they learn about that throughout the book. Friendship and forgiveness. Jez's friendship journey with Susie is an interesting one, including what seems to be a betrayal mid-book. Could you forgive Susie? And police brutality and racism. This is set in South Carolina in the 1960s. There are ample opportunities to discuss similarities and differences between then and today. Also in the character of the sheriff, you could explore, did he do enough? We also have suggestions for related websites, including the educator's guide from the publisher itself, an interview with Eden Royce, teachingbooks.net resources, and information about John F. Kennedy and the Civil Rights Movement. As the book takes place in 1963, the president does factor into part of the plot. Next, we have Snapdragon by Cat Lay, ages eight through 14. Whispers about the town witch don't stop Snapdragon from marching up and confronting her about her missing dog. Turns out, she's just an eccentric old lady named Jax who rescued the dog after he got hit by a car. Oh, by the way, Jax is also a witch. Feisty Snap is an outsider herself and jumps at the chance to apprentice with Jax, hoping to harness some magical powers herself. As it turns out, Jax has a long history with Snap's family. Snap also makes a friend and supports her through a gender transition. All magic aside, it's a realistic portrayal of economic struggle, school dynamics, and being okay with who you are. The story wraps up neatly 
but certainly leaves room for more volumes. A Game of Fox and Squirrels by Jen Rees, ages 10 through 14. Sam and her older sister, Caitlin, are sent to live with their Aunt Vicky in rural Oregon after their father breaks Caitlin's arm. Sam wants nothing more than to return to Southern California to start school with the friends she knows, interpreting Caitlin's quick adaptation to this new life as a betrayal. A card game gift from Aunt Vicky proves to have real life counterparts and consequences, leading Sam to interact with talking forest creatures, including a manipulative fox who keeps changing the rules of the game, continuously raising the stakes to see how far Sam will go to get her wish and go back to the life she knew, even if that life required walking on a lot of eggshells. The story tackles the complex emotions surrounding child abuse and the cycle of abuse, PTSD, and family loyalty, weaving between real life and the forest game allegory. The Time of Green Magic by Hilary McKay, ages 9 through 13. So much change. Abby's widower father has married Polly, a package deal with annoying new stepbrothers Max and Louis. Plus, beloved Granny Grace has moved back to Jamaica. The blended family finds a new big house in North London that's covered in ivy. And so they begin a life together with all the squabbles and small successes of figuring it all out. Seems like a simple slice of life story so far, right? Wait, there's more to this house. When Abby reads Kantiki, she is literally immersed into the story, emerging damp and salty. Strange sightings give the children pause. And exactly what is the cat that visits young Louis on the windowsill at night? And how big can it grow? Solving that mystery might be the only way to keep the family together and safe. Spindlefish and Stars by Christiane M. Andrews, ages 10 to 14. Clotilda has only ever known a transient, hard scrabble life with her father. He has always, always signaled to meet at the forest's edge ready to move on to the next village after he's stolen enough for them to survive. But this time he didn't show. All she has is a painting, a few turnips, a block of cheese, her father's cloak, and a ticket for half passage. Her brief voyage ends in the middle of the sea, cast onto an island of gray outside of time, surrounded by gray people who somehow know her but speak an indecipherable language. She is seemingly doomed to a destiny of spinning silver fish into yarn. Yuck. The only other child on the island is a boy who plays the flute and says he was just scooped from the ocean one day, remembering nothing about where he came from. What purpose does the yarn hold? And is clothes purpose tied to the yarn? Is there a way to es escape this dreary fate? What happened to Chloe's father? Or her mother, for that matter? Andrews weaves an enchanting narrative, drawing influences from Greek mythology and fairy tales. Down below the video, you will find a link to the full list of the titles from this year's Novelties videos, links where you can watch our other school corps presentations, and a link to book discussion tips from Multnomah County Library. We'd also really appreciate it if you would fill out our evaluation to let us know what you think of these videos. Finally, you can also find out more about SchoolCore by following the link below. Thanks for watching.